After defeating the forces of Wing Meng in 23 CE, 25 CE saw Lu Shu announce the start of the Eastern Han Empire, or in his mind, the continuation of the Han Empire more broadly. His emperor name is Guangwu, and the new imperial capital is far to the east of the Western Han's capital, Chang'an, and hence the title Eastern Han Empire for this Luyang-based empire. Guangwu ruled until 57 CE, and under his reign, efforts to retake the Gansu Corridor and the Tarim Basin began. This territory had been lost under the brief-living Xin Dynasty of Wang Meng, and already by around 50 CE, these efforts, along with broader efforts against the Northern Shangnu, had led to the dissolution of the Northern Shangnu and a corresponding great amelioration of the threat that they posed. One man who would become instrumental in Chinese efforts in the Tarim Basin was born during this period as well. His name is Ban Chao. Ban Chao is only one of three important siblings, all born to the historian and biographer Ban Biao. There are the twin boys born in 32 CE, Ban Chao the general and Ban Gu the scholar. And then there's their younger sister, a great scholar of her own right, Ban Zhao, who's born in 45 CE. We'll discuss them more soon. After Guangwu's death in 57 CE, he's followed by Emperor Ming, who rules until 75 CE. Towards the end of Emperor Ming's reign in 73 CE, Ban Chao takes the lead over Han forces in the Tarim Basin. After Emperor Ming, the next ruler is his son, Emperor Zhang, who rules until 88 CE. Zhang is followed by Emperor He, who rules until 106 CE. 88 CE saw Ban Chao refuse to allow a Kushan Empire envoy to pass, which prompted an attack by the Kushans, which Ban Chao successfully repelled. The Kushan Empire, which we'll take a closer look at when we discuss India's history during this period, played a major role in Silk Road trade, including in the transmission of the great import from India to China, Buddhism, which reached China in this first century CE. Early in his reign, in 91 CE, Ban Chao had re-secured the Tarim Basin for China, and he gained the title Protector of the Western Regions. While the early Han Dynasty rulers were quality emperors, many of those which followed were fairly weak. And for the Eastern Dynasty more broadly, we see a withdrawal from the more hands-on approach, the direct involvement and rule exerted by the former Western Han. From Emperor He onward, including He, the next 11 Chinese emperors ascended to the throne under the age of 16, and much of the political power came from the three vying political groups, the clans of the empresses, the inner court eunuchs, and finally the outer court Confucian scholar officials. With Ban Chao occupied in the west, his brother Ban Gu was fearing less well in the east. Ban Gu had followed in his father's footsteps and aimed to write a Confucian morality-framed history of the western Han. Unlike Sima Chan, who glorified great people with great accomplishments, Ban Biao and his son Ban Gu glorified virtuous people instead. Ban Gu's writings also permeated with a pro-small government tenor and were critical of the perceived excesses on the part of the earlier Western Han. But Ban Gu ended up in prison, where he died in 92 CE, which is when his sister, Ban Zhao, by now a widow, follows in his stead. She became the first female court historian, and she revised and completed Ban Gu's history of the early Han. She's also famous for her writing the Nu Jie, or the Admonitions for Women, a treatise on how the ideal woman should behave. Moving back to the West and to Ban Chao, 97 CE sees him sending out an envoy to the West for information gathering. This envoy, Gan Ying, makes his way through Kushan and Parthian territory and likely reached as far as the Persian Gulf. Among the many bits of knowledge he brought back, there is included the first Chinese reports on the Roman Empire. Before his reign passes in 106 CE, there are three other things that we are mentioning. One, while this tome would not be shown to a Han emperor until some 23 years later, around 100 CE, Shu Shen completed the monumental dictionary, the Shuowen Jitsa. 
2 in 102C, Ban Shao dies and is followed by his son Ban Yang. And thirdly, in 105C, Kai Lung presents his invention of world historical significance to the emperor. That invention was paper. While the first century CE was largely a good one for the Han Dynasty, the latter half's story is less so. Weaker emperors and political infighting amongst the three powers of the Han court aided in the decline. In the 120 CE, Ban Yang is recalled from the Tarim Basin and control of the region by the Han quickly dissipated. In 153 CE, this while Emperor Huan is in power, a number of natural disasters sent many peasants packing and onto the road, seeking salvation from the dearth of food. 168 and 169 CE had many of the Confucian ministers of the outer court sent away, or in many cases worse, imprisoned or killed by the inner court eunuchs. And in 184 CE, rebellion, aided in no small part by Taoist passions for equality, broke out. This yellow turban rebellion lasted until 204 CE, and local rulers came to control much of the empire. One local ruler, Dong Zhuo, burns the Han capital of Luyang in 190 CE. Finally, by 220 CE, the Eastern Han Dynasty formally ends. The powerful general in the north, Cao Cao, is followed by his son Cao Pi, who forces the abdication of the Han throne by the then emperor in name only, Emperor Xi'an. Cao Pi then announced the start of the Wei Dynasty, which ruled in the north. Over the following years, two other major kingdoms were established to the south of Wei, and China's story would continue under divided rule for some time now, and we'll encounter that when we next visit China's great story.